I won't even lie to you all. I had a rough time with this episode because it really involved Tierra and Rockstar a lot. And you know, the two of them mess, mess, mess. But let's get into this. <laughs> I'm like, come on, fruit cookie. I want to pull my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Fruit cookie! Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, Season 5, Episode 14, the Tierra and Rockstar uh, episode. Mess and Akbar. Them, that whole garbage. But anyway, we're going to start right off with Moniz and Mr. Ray. Moniz meets up with Mr. Ray down at the salon to tell him about what's going on with her and AD. Her and AD have basically broken up. Everything was pretty much handled through a text. I, I've i been kind of side-eyeing AD because I'm like, she got really, really chummy with Fizz. And then when they start having problems, you all up in Fizz's face and, and talking to Fizz and giving him all y'all's problems. And I'm, I always side-eye him because I think he's very bitchy. So I, I I don't know about that, but whatever, but it all played out. So they go through all of that. Then there was this whole thing about her telling Moni, AD telling Moniz she don't want to see Cam and this, that thing and the other. And I'm like, okay, now this is getting confusing. You don't want nothing to do with Moniz. And then you really don't want nothing to do with Cam for right now. So Moniz was, I think, kind of worried about, like, well, what am I supposed to tell my son? You know, all of a sudden, this woman that supposedly loves him so much, don't want to be bothered with him, all of a sudden. Then it just went from that to later on, AD meets up with Fizz, comes down, they're sitting there talking like they always are, and they're going back and forth, and now she's trying to actually set up some type of visitation with Cam through... Fizz and trying to go around Moniz. She don't want to see Moniz. She, but she wants to be visiting with Cam. And I'm like, okay, so we're playing games now. We're playing games now. And you can't be, you can't have a relationship with one of my kids around me. Like, it don't, that don't work. And I don't know why AD didn't know Fizz better than this. Next thing you know, while they're talking, guess who's walking up the walkway? She's been set up. Here comes Moniz. I said, I guess you thought you knew Fizz better than you did, huh? See, Fizz and Moniz got a weird relationship. Weird. They're only really happy when they're unhappy together. Y'all figure that out. But anyway, so they, they go, he says, you know, Fizz is like, well, I, I had Moniz come down because I just think, that y'all, all this stuff over the internet's crazy. Y'all need to really sit down and talk to each other. So, boom, here y'all both go talk it out. This bastard, and I know y'all had to see this. This bastard was back there, like, in all his glory. He seemed so happy at the discord that was actually going on. I was like, okay, Fizz. So, everything was cool when you were with Tiffany. But now that Tiffany done dumped you, now you done rolled around with some shit that was brought together by Todd to come on back around and bring it back to us with the bullshit. And you really work a jack on the down low because you want Moniz to be miserable like you are. That's what I saw. But whatever. And, and I mean, AD ain't no prize. She's a fuckhead. I, I, I ain't never really cared for AD all like that, but whatever. But, I, but Fizz, bitch. I see you, cunt. I see you. I bastard even got the, oh, they got the arguing all loud and shit. And at one point, he went and got some ice cream off the refrigerator and was sitting up on the counter eating ice cream, enjoying himself, watching them. And they screaming and, and all engaged and mad as fuck. 
I said, mm, mm. I said, remember, Fizz, karma's a bitch. Karma's a bitch. He's petty as hell. But anyway, Monique cussed her ass out and told her, listen, there will be no, no relationship with Cam without me. You can't have a relationship around me, bitch. So it is what it is. We're done. You're done. Go on about your business, bitch. That's my baby. And I was like, all right. I, I, actually, I was with Monique on that. Cam will be fine to forget about AD. AD, not his mother. Fizz is his father. Fuck you, AD. Go on. You decided to leave the relationship. You left the relationship. It is what it is. And that little sneaky shit you was trying to do, that wasn't cute. Anyway, but then where it really was ugly, after Bonice left, Fizz turned into something totally different. I know AD had to feel like an asshole when that motherfucker told her, oh, well, y'all talked. And now she didn't left, so I guess you can let yourself out of that door or out of that door. I said, not only did he set you up, threw your ass out there under the bus, and now he's putting you out of his little house. I said, oh, that was shady as hell. And she just kind of looked, and she kind of went, and he was all but laughing. All but laughing. I was like, that was a total bitch-made move. But okay, you done pretended to be this girl's friend all this time. And then you're going to try to act like, oh, you sad with Moniz. When do you ever really sad with Moniz? You love Moniz being miserable when you're miserable. When you're not miserable, you ain't got time. You don't give a fuck about Moniz when somebody's letting you play in their box a little bit. But then as soon as you back on the dry end, here you go. You're going to cause some discord. You a mess, Fizz. You're a hot mess. That's why you're always unhappy, bitch, because you're shady. Shady, bitch. Anyway, moving on. So, okay, here's the shit that I don't even want to talk about. But we see all of these clips where there's this, like this, these run-ins with Tierra and Alejandra and Akbar. And I'm like, what the fuck kind of shit is this? It's like, it was crazy. And then after this, shortly after that, you see Sade show up to the house, which is wife number one. And she gets in there, and this was the craziest shit ever. But she's fucking checking Alejandra and checking uh, Akbar and telling him that bitch is a problem. Did you, you, you and this whore? She's a problem. That bitch don't know her place. That bitch is jumping up, running up, doing shit. If I ain't screaming and yelling and making a scene and showing up at press conferences and shit and, and running up on bitches, that ain't her motherfucking place. You're my motherfucking husband, bitch. She's second in line. And Alejandro was like, I'm going to do what I need to do for my man. No, bitch. That's my man. I'm like, he ain't nobody's motherfucking man, bitches. And I'm still, I don't care what nobody say. I done seen a little tape and all that. That gate mouth motherfucker ain't, I, mm -mm, I ain't no way. I ain't no way. There's no way I be out in them streets looking like this and acting crazy. Like, it was so crazy. All Alejandra and fucking Sade do is argue amongst each other. And y'all said he tried to bring a third dumb bitch in to argue, and she don't want to argue with y'all. Look like Tierra get more dick than all of y'all. And her her confusion, she do what she do, and and every time you turn around, he dicking her down until you whores is arguing. So who's winning really? Ah, boy, that's who. But anyway, ridiculous. So that was that, and I was like, okay, all right, whatever. Next thing you know, we see Tierra meeting up with Rockstar. Rockstar, um, one of Tierra's cousins and Rockstar are friends. The friend lives somewhere else. He didn't contact Rockstar, tells him all this shit's going on with my cousin. Please go down, check on my cousin. She said this dude is bullying her and uh, stalking her. And I, I'm not there. Can you go handle this? Handle that nigga. I'm like, okay. So he goes, and, he's, and I'm like, I don't know how he's going to handle anything, but, you know, with his ass. But anyway, he goes down and talks to Tierra. Um, but he was getting Tierra together. I said, everybody's talking to Tierra. Everybody is talking to her like she's the fool that she is. Nobody's pulling punches, really. He's like, so you're telling me he's supposedly stalking you and all of this stuff is going on. 
yet you still screwing around with this dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she actually sat her ass there and said, um, he has some incredible dick, that's why. Girl, how you sound? How you sound on TV with that dumb shit? But he told her, I'm not getting involved unless you stop fucking him. Like, I'm not doing that. So she got, I'm not, I'm not messing with him no more. What was the last time he said, fuck me, like, two days ago. And she promised that she ain't gonna mess with him no more. She had the same type of a meeting with her, with her lawyers. And the lawyers told, that lawyer came right out and told her, this shit looks fucking ridiculous. We're doing press conferences and this, that thing, and the other. And then you're with him and it's all in the tabloid. This looks fucking ridiculous. That was his words. This looks fucking ridiculous. And if this, if there's one more thing to come out in these tabloids, Bloom and Associates is going to drop you as a client. Period, bitch. You're not going to have us in the street looking crazy. I said, okay. Brooke and Marcus. Marcus has sat down with Brooke, told her, bitch, listen, you stay in too much mess. And I don't like that motherfucking rock star. And I'm trying to avoid really putting hands on that dude. So I'm going to need you to stay away from him. She's like, well, wait a minute, Marcus. I don't like when you give me ultimatums and telling me what to do and this, that, and the other. And, you know, we're working on a record. He's like, no, y'all were working on a record. You're not working on anything with him anymore. I said, stay away from him and don't play with me. So what are you saying? You're going to take my ring back and this, that, and the other? He said, I'm telling you to stay the fuck away from Rockstar and don't fucking play with me, Brooke. That's what I'm telling you. Now, you put all that other shit together however you want, but I'm telling you, bitch, don't play with me. I said, okay, Marcus, okay. Since you know her, you know Brooke. Brooke's crazy kick right in, and that's a challenge. You know, all while he's talking, you can see it on her eye, in her eyes. She's thinking, challenge! I said, mm, mm, you're going to be crying again, Brooke, but okay. Then we see Ray J meet up with Rockstar. And, you know, the bitch made niggerish mess that has been going on with Ray J is a bit much for me to stomach this season. He sat his ass on camera. And basically denied ever being in love with Tierra. Oh, we was fucking around at a point she was in love. And so the fuck were you, Ray J. When y'all first came on here, motherfucker, it was you and TT to the motherfucking dirt. Don't start. Don't start. That's that old bitchy shit. Who you doing that for, Princess? You trying to make Princess feel good? You need to let that go. That looks terrible, motherfucker. Anyway, so I didn't like that at all. At all. Now, another scene we see, Sean Love and Amber. You know I can't stand the two of them together. It just, it's just something about their dynamic that just wears me out. But Sean Love was fussing at Amber about Marcus. I said, oh, fuck, Marcus. What you done done? Amber got her pictures with half her ass out. And Marcus is on there liking it. And they're DMing each other. And she told him, told her, listen, bitch. Just like that. Listen, bitch. He goes with Brooke Valentine. And you know I don't play that motherfucking side chick shit, bitch. You're not going to be out here embarrassing me in the streets, whore. No, 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 no. It's not that. It ain't, it ain't that. Yeah, your mother know. Your mother used to be an old street, out and street ass woman. Bitch, she know. And she know you. She know you. She know you ain't shit, bitch. A mess. I said, mm, and Marcus, you're going to get yourself in trouble. That motherfucking crazy ass Brooke going to be cutting up again. I said, Lord have mercy. Next thing we know, didn't Brooke take her ass on down there and see Rockstar? I told you, challenge. Took her ass right on down there. He talking to her, so go ahead and get in that booth. Girl, she took her ass back there, gets in the booth, this, that, and the other. Well, my, Marcus told me not to be around you. You're going to be telling Mar let Marcus tell you what to do. I said, girl. You'll fuck around. Rockstar won't get your ass and his ass whooped. Now, I'm all here for Marcus whooping his ass, like, for real. Like, I would love for Marcus to be the one to beat Rockstar's ass. Yeah. Just fuck him on up. Him or A1. Either one of them two. Just fuck Rockstar up. But anyway, he get her in there, and he's 
having this uh, album release party, and he's got Tierra already scheduled. See, messy fucking boots. Tierra's already scheduled to host for it. He gonna throw Brooke into the mix. And while he's trying to show her the flyer and all this, he's like, I already had you up on her. She's like, wait, is that Tierra? Yeah, bitch, you're being thrown into the mix. But whatever. Then he, he gonna flash her a picture of him and his motherfucking draws. I said, We don't want none of that, girl. Go sit down, bitch. He's so fucking extra, bitch. Only person that's getting away with flashing some dick and we going, whoa, is Safari, bitch. We ain't paying you no attention, rock star, bitch. Get your fucking ass somewhere, somewhere. Sit down, damn ass. Anyway, so she all, you know, Brooks playing all into it. I said, girl, this reunion is going to be a fucking shit show. But whatever. So let's move on to the release party. You know, Tierra and Brooke ain't seen each other. They run into each other. They get to reading each other with some subliminals or shit. Just stupid. Then he goes in and separates them like, yeah, y'all are co-hosts. Bullshit. Separates them. Amber and Sean Love show up. People say, I had to invite them to show them what a real release party looks like and squash that little beef. Whatever. But they were there. And in that time, Amber and Tierra, if you remember, them two had a run-in seasons and seasons ago. They squashed their beef. And just as they squashed their beef, guess who shows up? Motherfucker Sade, my wife number one. And when I tell you that bitch rolled up through Rockstar's party and motherfucking checked Tierra, she fucking checked that bitch. I said, Tierra, ain't no way. Bitch, you are on the opening credits for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, bitch. You have always been a main cast member for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, bitch. And for you to sit here and let this whore who we don't know, ain't new, came out of nowhere, who you're fucking her motherfucking husband. You let this hoe come on here and check you? Girl, you crazy as a motherfucker. Not on my motherfucking show. I, and then you wrong too? You playing humble and this, that, and the other. That bitch that told you all about, I would have never picked you. He ended up picking you because he stepped out of line and this, that, thing, and the other, and you all humble. Well, um, I just don't even want to be a part of it. We tried to bring you into our thing, and bitch, you just don't want to listen to it. I said, ain't no motherfucking way. Ain't no motherfucking way. As good as my name is James, honey, I'd have been telling that Sade, even if I didn't mean it. I'd have told that bitch, you think you coming in here checking me, bitch? Do you really think you coming in here checking me when I just took my pussy up off of that gate mouth motherfucker's face? Oh, I'd have let her have... That bitch would not have came in there and checked me and I'm fucking her husband. Bitch, I'm already winning. I'm fucking your husband, bitch. I ain't got no husband. And you came to see me, bitch, because you're pressed. Ain't no fucking way you coming down here on my job checking me and I could be wrong as two left shoes. But, bitch, you ain't checking me. Not on the set of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You might check me over at the Tyler Perry Studios, bitch. But over here at Mona Me Productions, you ain't fucking checking me, bitch. I'm on the opening credits, whore. And if the bitch would have been set up to, to check me, I'd be checking Mona. Crazy as hell. She checked the fuck out of Tierra and then walked out with all of her weave intact. I said, you got to be fucking kidding. Season one, Tier, I thought you were supposed to be a tough bitch. That's two times that Sade that fucked you around and made you look crazy on TV and walked away with all her hair intact. Bitch, you crazy as a motherfucker. Anyway. I, that shit was just crazy to me. I, I just didn't understand it at all. And at that point, I said, let's move on. Last little run-in. Akbar and Rockstar. Rockstar goes to see Akbar. And they just, up, you know, on the mountainside. You know, they always up on the mountainside with a car in between them. I said, oh, they get ready to fight. Or they get ready to 
you know, simulate a fight, naturally. They get to going back and forth, and then that motherfucking Akbar checked that fucking rock star. I said, Lord have mercy. He told, first of all, both of them was looking like some bitch. Bitches, for real. They was up there comparing designers. These are Gucci. These are red bottoms. That's oh, oh, you two motherfucking whores. If y'all don't get past that and get the swinging at him, and they just talk going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then when Akbar clown Rockstar, when he was like, you've been getting off on my, my porn. You looking at it. And, and Rockstar is like talking so fast. He didn't, he telling him about his dick and all the talk. Your dick, what dick? You you think you got so much dick? Your dick disappeared halfway through the video. He's like, yeah, it was in that bitch. I'm like, and he told me, you, you was watching it. You was looking at me. You liked it. You was getting off on it. I said, oh, rock star girl, he got you looking crazy. He got you looking crazy, girl. So what are you going to do? Turn you into the fourth member of the harem, honey, as a download piece, honey? You might as well go. You got that old high ass. And he's saying that he had this old red jogging suit on. He said, that jogging suit is ridiculous. And it was just as tight with his butt sitting just as high. I said, he probably could see you running around in a harem, scarem, cute little goddamn uh, belly dancing outfit. You part of, you going to be the fourth part of the harem, Miss Rockstar, girl. I'm going to leave y'all right there with that. Shake it to the left, shake it to the right. Get it, Rockstar, bitch. Clownishness.